thank you for clicking on this video thank you for joining me on another masterclass in this video we will be transitioning an Oncidium Alliance orchid here that arrived earlier this year and I have never seen it bloom I have had it in seedling bark all this time and been taking care of it according to a wet dry cycle and yes this is a transitioning video because this orchid will go into LECA and self-watering because that is my jam 90% of my collection is in LECA and self-watering and all my insidiums as a matter of fact are in that setup and that is why yes specifically a transitioning video from organic media into LECA and self-watering however if LECA is not your thing because you're not quite certain about the evaporative cooling effect that LECA has and could affect some roots at some point and you would prefer to use an alternative in organic media then I am going to suggest in this case because of the root size very small lava rock or pumice also small pumice I have orchids with a very fine root system in small lava rock in semi-hydro and I have a very vigorous nobly type dendrobium that I put into pumice and self-watering only as an experiment and I can confirm it works beautifully. So those are the two alternatives if you're not sure about the evaporative cooling whether that would make you hesitant about using LECA, pumice and small lava rock for fine roots because today we are working with a very fine rooted Oncidium type orchid and for that reason small LECA as well. This will help with the water retention in the pot and it will match the climate of the pot that the orchid came out of which was seedling bark which is also very water retentive and then if you move it into LECA you don't want to be changing the climate of the pot and you want to make sure that the media also stays very very wet for a long period of time without it actually drying out because yes self-watering sounds like we have got it easy and our media never dries out. But if you were to use large LECA, when working with a fine root system, then you will be starving the velamen and the root system that is accustomed to a water retentive media of the moisture around it. So we don't want to lose what the orchid is used to. We are going to replicate. That makes a transition very, very easy. And it will also, to some degree, guarantee that the still viable old root system will continue to function and not decline. However, I had the luxury of waiting up until now to see what this orchid does when it comes to actually growing a new root system, which is the perfect timing to do any form of transition for any eventualities, worst case scenario that the orchid will object to the new media and dumps the old roots. When a new root system grows, it's absolutely fine because the velamen of that root system will know absolutely nothing else except LECA and self-watering. And I'm going to stick with LECA and self-watering, even though I did mention alternatives at the beginning, but I'm just going to keep referring to LECA. So the fine root system, the new root system will have nothing else except LECA to grow into and it's going to survive and the orchid won't be stalled, nor will it be set back even if the old root system were to die. So with an orchid, it is always important to watch and wait for new roots, if at all possible, before any transition. But even if you were to say your new orchid has arrived and you want to change the media because you don't know how old it is, I still advise do not change the old media into fresh media, even if you were going to stick with organic seedling bark, as would be the case with this Oncidium, because even organic seedling bark is completely different in its characteristic than the old media that the orchid had in the pot before you decided to do a good thing and change it up and freshen the pot up. So always wait for new roots. That would apply not just for transition purposes. And another thing as well with waiting for new roots is you get to know your orchid because not every orchid will grow a new root system when the new growth starts. So let's just say you were going to repot your orchid no matter the media now and you see a new growth and you're like yep new growth active growth i can repot hold off until you see new roots start because look at my little insidium here fine roots it had one bulb when it came it had 
two new growths when it first arrived and up until now it did not grow any new roots and we still have a plump old pseudobulb and look at the pseudobulbs of the mature new growths they have already formed completely and only now is the orchid actually beginning to start new roots so any orchid doesn't go by the golden rule of a new growth starts and with that new roots will come the question you have to ask yourself and be certain about when you have your orchid and you're about to repot is I have new growths, when are the new roots gonna grow? Does my orchid have enough energy to actually sustain a repot, which is always stressful? And will I set my orchid back if I still do a repot? And in this classic example here, we had one bulb with two new growths, which actually speaks for the vigor of this orchid. However, having repotted that prematurely, a lot of damage would have been done. The new growths may not have reached their full size potential and the back bulb could have shriveled in the process we could have set the orchid back stalled it but without repotting too soon we avoided all of that and the orchid is perfectly fine absolutely acclimated now to my environment and now i know that this orchid is growing roots when the pseudobulbs have matured so we're not just waiting for blooms in the orchid hobby we have to wait for roots and to prove the theoretical pointers i was just mentioning before we head into the practical side of this masterclass here's my leptotus bicolor which arrived last year at some point she was also in seedling bark and I waited until I saw new roots growing before transitioning her into small lecker because of the fine root system. And she never stalled or stopped. Now, I may be losing one leaf back here, that is normal, but this orchid, this is an update from a transition video I did last year. And since then, she even flowered for me this year, and now she's growing all these new growths right here. And this was the time of year last year when I transitioned her and here we are with root growth. So she never lost the rhythm of her growth habit while acclimating and the transition went smoothly and only 12 months later am I losing one leaf in the back. But again, that's normal. I am not concerned. This orchid is doing absolutely fine so based on what i was talking about earlier on in the video when it came to observations about this orchid here is exactly what i applied for my leptotus bicolor and she's never looked back i do not know if her old root system died because i moved it into leka but that is of no concern to me because the entire orchid never started to show signs of stress okay so, Leptotus Bicolor, thank you very much for being here. Now we're going to move on to discussing how we assess our LECA ratio by checking what is in the pot. And for that, we have to get our orchid out and see how the root system is. And what I'm going to try and do is actually just pull her out because there's gravel underneath, which I would like to separate and save because it is inorganic and I recycle everything inorganic, everything. If I see gravel, I keep it, it's good stuff. Trying to contain my mess here, and just get the gravel out of the base. There we go, that makes separation easier. And now we'll just quickly, gently tickle out the seedling bark. Because this orchid is such a vigorous grower, we can now assess the root system. What does it look like? What characteristics does it have? It feels wiry. That's okay, that's good. That means it's not that sensitive of a root system. We can be a little bit more, you know, drastic with it. It's not just going to snap on us, crack on us so easily. There's a little bit of sphagnum moss in here, which is fine. That just proves that she loves her water which we are going to respect and repeat when it comes to our transition into Lekka. And not saying that we are going to repeat putting sphagnum moss into our pot, but the water retentiveness of our pot will respect the fact that there was sphagnum moss included in seedling bark, which, haha, <laughs> that makes her very, very thirsty. And in my very dry climate, so let's consider any kind of different environments, I have a super dry climate, 
Humidity is not a luxury I can speak of, so I have to make sure that I do exactly what this orchid is accustomed to with regards to the transitioning and the water requirements that she has so that she stays healthy and happy and we can see that she is vigorous. I mean, very rarely do we see one pseudobulb do so well and produce two new growths at the same time during acclimating and everything she had to deal with when it came to shipping, stress, etc. So this orchid, wow, if these two growths in the coming year produce another growth each or, you know, they double up again as they are doing with a single back bulb that she had, <laughs> this is going to be a very thirsty orchid. And that is our transition point as well to make sure that she never ever has to look for water or struggle with getting water. Now, when it comes to also repotting into inorganic media, it is not necessary to pick out every single tiny bit of old media, organic media. That makes no difference at all because it eventually the climate of the pot will 99% of the time be simple inorganic media. And, you know, the acidity that we are afraid of when it comes to organic media breaking down, this little bits and pieces that are left honestly will not make that big a difference whatsoever. I like to try and get as much of it off anyway. That's just, you know, who I am. Once you start, you can't stop kind of person. But um, if I see a root that has sort of attached itself to a piece of bark, it's hugging it nicely. It's comfortable there, especially when it comes to root tips. I absolutely leave that piece of bark on as well as sphagnum moss. But what I will do is fill up a container with some water and then we'll just rinse her out in the root bowl and we will discuss how I kept her going in my dry climate while she was acclimating and then how I started the transition of the orchid in the old pot preparing her for a transition into leka and self-watering because that can be done, but there is a specific way that I do it. And how I do that, if you're interested, is coming right up. Let's talk about some pre-transition basics. I do not treat the orchid in organic media as my transition process. When she first arrives to me, as in this case, and I don't have new roots growing, I care for my orchids in those situations as they are in the media. So this one was in seedling bark and I made sure it had its wet dry cycle. And then I also started to fertilize just a little bit because she was just one bulb with two new growths. Little bit of fertilizer, maybe a hundred parts per million. Let the pot dry out flush, calcium, magnesium, you know, the whole care thing when it comes to fertilizer, supplements, watering and flushing, I did respecting the media that was in the pot and not thinking, well, I'm going to transition her anyway, so I'm going to adapt the old roots to whatever media I am going to be using in future, as in Lekka. That is a big mistake because the old roots do not know that much water retention. The safe bet is to go with a wet dry cycle, especially when it comes to organic media, even if it is seedling bark. So you cannot transition old roots in a pot in order to then preempt what media you're going to choose when it comes to transitioning, for example, into leka and self-watering. In these cases, always treat the orchid based on the media that is already in the pot. When the new roots start growing at that point, you can start to already acclimate those new roots in the pot especially if you don't have time to repot the moment you see root nubbins coming out. It is at that point with the new roots growing, even in the old media, that you can start upping the water retention in the old pot so that the new roots are accustomed, are growing into wet media. And it buys you some time if you can't get to the repot quickly enough. So please make sure if you find yourself in this situation and you want to try this out or if you're doing it and you're wondering why your old root system is dead, please make sure to not start the pre-transitioning process 
in a pot with old roots in organic media that are accustomed to a wet dry cycle, it is not going to work. New roots then start wetting that pot and start adapting new roots. So my little insidium, that's exactly what I did. That's why you saw how wet the pot was. I was not sure when I could get into this repotting session here. So once I saw the root nubbins come, I thought, okay, now my pot is going to get wetter and wetter. I still maintained the exact same fertilizing, flushing, supplementing regime as before. It had no difference, it made no difference whether I got new roots or not, but the pot stayed wet for much, much longer, and bit by bit, I never let it dry out. That's why it was in this Greek tub, because I always left water at the base. This had nothing to do with the fact that I was doing this during the warmest months of the year. If this were to happen in winter and I want to proceed with my transition, this is exactly what I would be doing in winter. That is, if you're not in a climate that doesn't have the four seasons. Or if you are growing in a controlled environment, indoors, greenhouse, anything like that. If you have conditions and your orchid is telling you something, the season makes absolutely no difference. I've got a video about seasonal orchid care where I address that and I'm going to link that in the description. So that's all I'm going to do with this one. And no, I'm not cutting off any roots. Whether I understand if they're dead or not, this is going to help me with anchoring. It doesn't matter if some of them are dead. There's nothing wrong with leaving something like this in a pot where you're transitioning into inorganic media. This is looking great. And all these beautiful little roots down here, they are going to go into Lekka and they will be none the wiser. And this little pseudobulb right here is just starting its root nubbins right there. So let me just add that to the mix of information. If you have an orchid that is growing two new growths and only one is starting a new root system, go ahead and repot because now you know at least one is starting the new root system. The other one is not going to be far behind as we can see in this example. And speaking of pot, let's have a look at our pot. Look at the size jump. <laughs> what is that? Maybe two, four, six, six centimeter pot right there. And it's going to go into a 15 centimeter pot. And you would think, well, that is ridiculous. And uh, maybe for the first year, it's going to look a little silly. But I am here just to tell you that no matter the pot size that you use for your inorganic growing, it is about letting the orchid do her thing for many, many years to come without disturbing her if nothing else is going wrong, maybe pest attack or something the orchid has to be taken out of the pot. We're not talking about the setup going wrong. We're talking about maybe rot, etc. That is not what I'm talking about. If all goes well in a pot like this, the vigor of the orchid kind of demands it has to be in a big pot. Otherwise, I will be doing this again next year. And I don't want to do that. I want to leave her alone. Besides, that root system here, this is from one little back bulb. That's it. And I've got two new growths coming. And they're going to produce their root system independently and it's going to triple the amount of roots that are starting to grow and will fill the pot. So if I were to go down a pot size, well, I'll see you next year. But next year, all I want to do with this orchid is see her blooms and update you on the fact that she has maybe two other new growths. And imagine repeating that year in, year out, a vigorous orchid in organic media and your pot can be as big as you want it to be and as much space as you have. You don't have to consider getting a pot size that matches whatever the previous pot size was. I hope that makes sense. Now, secondly, position of the orchid will always be in the middle. I could say push her back because, you know, this is the back bulb and she's got this direction of growth. So, you know, here we can safeguard some space for future growth. But because I don't know now what these next growths are going to do, I'm going to buy myself even more time. I'm going to put the orchid as best into the middle of the pot as I can. 
And this way, no matter where new growths come, even if it turns out it's double on each of these bulbs, we are going to be okay at least for two years. And that is more than I might get out if I were to put the bulbs in the back, okay? Another thing is, if she gets that vigorous, positioning an orchid in the middle of the pot will also ensure that the roots all have the same kind of length as they reach the perimeter of the pot, meaning if I need to up pot her because she's going to surprise me with her vigor, I can do so by lifting her out of the pot, putting her in a bigger pot, and I have the same perimeter around here. I have had orchids in the past where I've put the growth in the back, and then all the roots that were here would come over this way, go to the edge of the pot. They would be so long, stiff in some cattleya cases, I was stuck and limited in my positioning of that orchid in the bigger pot. I had to shift it or else I would break a root. Putting an orchid in the middle of the pot, all these considerations are out the window, with the exception that, woohoo, she's growing bigger, better, and faster than I expected. I have to bump her up a pot size. And should that be the case, rejoice, you can take her out of the pot, it's inorganic media, and then put her in a bigger pot and fill around with the same inorganic media and you're good to go. Now, normally I fill everything up with water because my little lecker can then disperse nicely around the root ball and I make sure my velamen is protected and doesn't get bashed by the hardness of the lecca. You know, want to be kind to our velamen. So I'm going to do that, but here's another thing. When it comes to microfiber, if, for example, this orchid were to go into large lecca, if you have very, very high humidity and you're growing outdoors and it's very, very rainy, Large lecker will do as well. However, then I wouldn't even recommend self-watering. So we're going to talk about indoor growing, greenhouse growing, where nothing really gets rained on constantly. If you were to use large lecker because that is all you have on hand, you must accommodate the fact that the lecca is large. There's more air gaps around the roots. You have to accommodate with moisture and you would need to take two microfibers in a 15 centimeter pot to make sure that the water actually gets wicking and up and around the lecker. The same with creating a loop and filling lecker in underneath so that your wicking potential rises to, let's say, half the height of the pot. You're already halfway up with good water retention, and then the rest of the pot, for example, will benefit from that extra wicking material that is in the middle of the pot. I don't need to do that because I'm using small lecca. My small lecca is going to be the one that is going to do all the water retaining. For that reason, I only have one microfiber. And then I'm going to get a support, even though I don't think she needs it, but my patio is still extremely windy, and I don't know how long her spikes will be, so maybe the spikes are going to need some help as well. And what I'm going to do is raise my support just a little bit, a little bit higher than the base of the pot. Pour my lecker in, and this way buy myself some more height. Stick it in the middle. Check the orchid and make sure that the angles are correct, because even though I want to use the flat side of the pseudobulb, I like the fact that the new growths are more in the middle than the older growth is. And after much contemplation, fill around with small lecca. This is the normal level of this self-watering reservoir. What I can do, because I know that the root ball is way up there, is to raise the level of the reservoir so that the pot actually rests on the water. And this way, now, the water is all the way halfway up the pot, almost touching the root system in the pot. I know that because of years and years of growing in these pots, and if you're unsure about growing in a pot where you can't see the root system, then 
you know, of course, use clear pots, please. The roots themselves won't be touching the water, but the wicking is nice and close to where the roots are, and that's exactly what the roots had while they were still in their seedling container the last six to eight weeks when I saw new roots growing, but I couldn't get to repotting the orchids, so the wet environment around the old roots is re-established and maintained. You might say, where's your tag? I do not have a tag for this orchid yet because I'm not exactly sure what it is. I know who it came from and I know what date she arrived. And once she blooms, well, haha, <laughs> then we make her a nice tag with her identity. I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, please, you know, the comments are there for a reason. There'll be other transitioning master classes with other examples because woohoo! The orchid hobby has so many variables. <laughs> but when it comes to the basics, when it comes to the little minutia detail about, you know, don't transition your orchid in the pot while it's still in the old media, etc., etc., this pretty much covers all the bases. When we get into other details and other variables, I will be pointing them out to you as and when that happens. In the meantime, if you have a specific case, a specific question, ask away. And Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it if you've made it this far in the video. Your time, your support, very much appreciated. You know the drill, like the video, don't like the video. If you don't like the video, tell me why, so that I can improve on whatever it is that was not to your liking, if it is in my power to do so. Please remember to subscribe and do all that fun stuff that YouTube loves so much so as to recommend a video like this. Oh my goodness, and if you want to share it, feel free to do so. The world is your oyster. I appreciate any support and every support and you watching. Have yourself a beautiful day. One condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.